All City Network, still here in San Diego for the 2022 Winter Meetings. Patrick Lyons, Ryan Herrera, Jesse Friedman here. We got to talk about your Diamondbacks. Xander Bogarts still out there. So many free agents been coming off the board here in the last 24 to 36 hours, but the shortstop market still going strong even after Trey Turner's deal with the Phillies. Any any news first and foremost on on the Bogarts? Maybe maybe pivoting to Carlos Correa news, or are <laughs> they are they still just having those conversations? Yeah, it doesn't sound like, and I, I mean, honestly, the Xander Bogarts rumors never seem to be at a serious point for the Arizona Diamondbacks. Uh, there's a lot of connections between the Diamondbacks front office and Xander Bogarts, um, given that a lot of the D-backs front office people came from Boston. Um, but yeah, I think it's possible that some of those conversations are still continuing. At this point, it sounds like the most likely outcome is that Xander Bogarts returns to the Boston Red Sox. It seems like some of those talks have picked up steam. And that's not really a surprise, right? I don't think, as we've said in the past, I don't think the Diamondbacks getting Xander Bogarts was ever something that uh, you should be betting on. Uh, never seemed like a, a likely outcome necessarily. Just the Diamondbacks sort of doing their due diligence and kind of seeing what the price tag was. Um, that said, you know, there are other shortstops out there on the market. So, you know, maybe you think if the Diamondbacks are interested in Xander Bogarts, you know, maybe they maybe they do pivot. I don't think it's Carlos Correa. I think there's yeah, no way that that's happening. Um, but Dansby Swanson is at least a logical name that maybe you could think about. Yeah, they're, they're, they're not going to do what the San Diego Padres did and out of nowhere just start offering $50 million more. The Cubs obviously are, are looking uh, for that, that shortstop as well. Uh, yeah. And, and that, that does make a lot of sense there. But as you point out, Dansby Swanson, would you be disappointed? You're, you're, you're Cubs, but would you be disappointed to, to get Dansby Swanson after having been so close? Linked to uh, you know, Bogarts and Grant. No, I, as far as as you know, Cubs fans shouldn't be disappointed for getting a you know an All Star caliber shortstop who led you know the National League in defensive run save and was basically the best defender at shortstop in the National League. Um, the Cubs Cubs fans shouldn't be disappointed in that. Um, it just means that there's more work to do. He doesn't have, quite have the bat that Carlos Correa or Xander Bogarts have. Um, you don't know how well. Uh, he projects to age, I guess. Uh, but he's also going to be for fewer years, so uh, that means. You know, if, if something goes wrong at the end of the contract, uh, it's not as long as like a contract that, that looks like uh, Carlos Correa may be getting at this point. But I'm curious, Jesse, um, you know, I, I understand why the Cubs obviously fit. They're a shortstop fits for the Cubs right now. And why that's yeah. a big priority. What, what, why does a guy like Dandy's? Dansby Swanson fit uh, down in Phoenix, down in Arizona with the Diamondbacks. Yeah, I mean, frankly, I'm not sure he does. Um, <laughs> I, I Again, like even the Xander Bogarts rumors in the first place came as a big shock to a lot of people. The Diamondbacks have Geraldo Perdomo. Uh, they have Nick Ahmed coming back from injury for 2023. He's supposed to be fully healthy. So shortstop is not an urgent need for them by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but I do think that, you know, if one of those top – uh, free agents is a player that they feel particularly uh, convicted about and, you know, they feel would age well. Um, you know, maybe there are some exceptions that could be made. Maybe they can kind of reshuffle guys. They have Jordan Lawler, uh, one of the top shortstop prospects in baseball on the way. But if you reshuffle some positions and whatnot down the road, maybe you can scoot around that. Uh, Dansby Swanson, as far as we know, there there haven't been any associations <laughs> with the Diamondbacks. So you're just making it up. He hasn't been connected to the Diamondbacks in any way, it I guess sense. so. Uh, it but, makes sense. If, but if you're not going after Bogarts and he's too expensive, the next logical choice would be Dansby right. Swanson. Right. And there, there's a connection. Like There's a there history. Is, there is an undeniable connection. Big history. Uh, given that the Arizona Diamondbacks selected Dansby Swanson first overall uh, back in the 2015 first-year player draft and then, of course, promptly traded him uh, to the Atlanta Braves in the Shelby Miller deal that is infamous in the history of the Arizona it's Diamondbacks. The, it's the Dansby Swan. It's the, the Dave Stewart, Tony La Russa deal. Yeah. It's not, not, not great, but you could, yeah. you could maybe have a swan song for Dansby Swan. It is, it is a comeback. It right? is swan interesting like it. that like it. it's interesting that like you theoretically could bring him back. Like yeah. after all the Diamondbacks wow. fans have been through, you wow. know, with a trade that didn't pan out at all with the fact that Dansby Swanson, had, you know, his career started out actually not that great, right? For a couple of years, yeah. he was kind of a middle of the road shortstop. Um, only really this past season, I think, has he really solidified himself as one of the best shortstops in the game. Theoretically, you could still bring Dansby Swanson back and, and have him be an Arizona Diamondback while he's at the top of his game. 
But like we said before, the Xander Bogarts rumor kind of came out of nowhere. I don't know how serious those conversations have really been to this point. And as far as we know, there have been no conversations about about Dansby Swanson coming to the Diamondbacks. So, Andrelton Simmons is still on the. Still yeah, on the yeah, you know, maybe Andrelton Simmons is, is the guy. But uh, but yeah, shortstop has never been an urgent need for the Arizona Diamondbacks. So I think it's perfectly possible they just roll into the 2023 season with Perdomo. Uh, you know, hope that he bounces back and has a better year next year. Uh, he struggled a little bit offensively, but he has some he has some promise on both sides of the ball. And then Nick Ahmed has been a, a solid big league shortstop for a number of years he comes back and is healthy you know that's a pretty decent duo that you can work with throughout the season yeah final year before uh he hits free agency again right. kind of just tries to finish up somewhere he had a couple bucks uh, on the way out but one strategy that a lot of teams will will take when they have a, a young roster obviously you know the cubs did this before they started becoming contenders in about 2015 is you sign that first uh, superstar player you know, almost two, three years before it really seems like you're going to be there sure. uh, to kind of lay that groundwork. And I think the Diamondbacks are in that in that spot where they might need some bigger names and, and some leaders that have some experience, veterans yeah. um, that, that that have that postseason experience. Uh, in particular, you know, Christian Walker is um, one of those more veteran guys, but uh, right. not, doesn't have the same cachet as a World Series champion player like Dansby Swanson. So not only do you obviously improve your offense, you still have those outfielders that you can use as trade chips to improve your team even further. I think that I think that makes the Diamondbacks a potential contender for the third wild card. If you bring in a Dansby yeah. Swanson or Xander Bogart, that original player, and you can make a trade uh, for one of those outfielders to improve a different spot. Do you think something like that? We don't know. We don't know who the the uh, imaginary player is. Maybe it's Sean Murphy. We did right. talk about that. Oh. Check that out in PHGO Sports. Um, but if you had Murphy and you had Dansby Swanson, it seems like it's greedy, but look at what other teams are doing. They're yeah. getting even more. Swanson, Murphy, does that move the needle? Would you say that they would be a uh, contender for that third wild card with those two moves? Yeah, I mean, again, the Diamondbacks are projected to win about 84 games, according to at least what the numbers say. And then that is just granted, that's just the numbers, right? At the end of the day, you still have to go out and actually play the games. But uh, but yeah, the D-backs are relatively close, at least on paper. And so, yeah, if you bring in Dansby Swanson and you trade an outfielder, you know, for a Sean Murphy, the D-backs on paper would be looking pretty good as long as they can improve the bullpen. So, uh, yeah, I mean, there's no getting around the fact that that, that would be a, a huge move for them overall. Um, but again, it, we're not really sure if the Diamondbacks are actually going to spend this kind of money. And that's why the Xander Bogarts rumors were so surprising at first, because it, it seems like the Diamondbacks... They are going to increase payroll probably closer to about 15 to 20 million than, you know, like the 25, 30 million that Bogarts would come in all by himself. And based on what we've seen so far from the shortstop market, I don't know if Dansby Swanson is going to be that much less, at least on a per year basis, as some of what the other shortstops have gotten so far. But we got to, you got to go back to the video. I, I, had, a, I had a solution with, with the Rockies trade. Will you get Ellie Harris Montero to play right. third base for you? <laughs> we'll take uh, Ahmed's contract off your uh, off your payroll. Mark Melanson, and now you've then got they the money. Need, then they the would upgrade. need a shortstop at that point. They so it, it does, I guess, in some ways, it does fit together. But yeah, I don't see the Diamondbacks trading Jake McCarthy for uh, for Montero of the Rockies. You, but uh, who knows? Who knows? Do you see the Diamondbacks as uh, a, a third place type team right now? Uh, would you give them the edge over the Giants where they're at? And you know, again. Ooh with those two new pieces that could potentially bring in, that, that puts them in the running. Where, where do you see them in the West right now, as is, before any other big moves? As is, I think I probably would have the Diamondbacks slightly ahead of the Giants, just because yeah. the Giants are losing Carlos Rodon, which is a huge loss for them. Um, you know, maybe they're able to bring him back. I'm sure they have more moves to come. Uh, they also didn't sign Aaron Judge, right? They've got Mitch Hanniger, uh, but I don't think that's going to move the needle too much for them. So currently, I probably would select the Diamondbacks over the Giants, but we know that that franchise has tons of money that they're probably going to spend this offseason. So uh, it might be close going into 2023, which of those teams is, is you know, favored to, to perform better during the season. I'm, I'm even feeling like the Diamondbacks might have a better shot at, at going to the postseason next year than the Cubs. Again, the Cubs, Cubs have a little bit more to do at this point. Cubs do have some work to do. Cubs, Cubs have some work to do. Diamondbacks, maybe, maybe even if they get those guys, you know, it's, it's, those, are, those are big moves. Not huge moves. You know, those are moves that move them in the, in the, yeah, in the right direction. Cubs got to do a few more of those themselves, so I guess we'll see. Maybe maybe it'll be a battle. We'll uh, see. PHNX and CHGO battle for uh, 
wild card number three. The all the all city division is the only <laughs> one that matters at the end of the day. All so. city network standings are the ones that we care about, but these Correct. are the kind of moves that go down at the winter meetings. One that obviously move the needle. You never know how much, but uh, once you build that momentum, uh, it definitely can go in a positive way and get yourself uh, now with with six uh, postseason spots in, in both leagues. That obviously changes the complexion of things uh, from just a few years ago when uh, you only had the four. So uh, we got a few more hours here left in San Diego. Keep it tuned in to PHNX Sports over on YouTube. We're all City Network. Thanks for tuning in.